boy Tammy. It's a long day, isn't it? Fix the beat. All right, here we go. Mary Christie, what tea and flick preventative do you use on your females? So, um, pregnant dogs, nothing. If a pregnant dog does have fleas or is nursing, then have a flea and tick spray. You can just topically spray that on a dog's back. Don't put it on its belly because you don't want the puppies nursing on that. What's it called? Adam's flea and tick spray. Yeah. Um, as far as pregnant dogs are concerned, we don't like to give anything. Provecto is what we use regularly when dogs are pregnant. And supposedly you can use it on a pregnant dog, but our general philosophy is is the only thing we give pregnant dogs are vitamins and um, folic acid and absolutely not any vaccinations. There's one that you can give your dog that uh, if you're not going to breed her, what's the name of it? I can't think of it. The vet had it. I don't know. Okay. Always check with your vet. Double check. Do Google it. They usually Google it for you or should. So I was asking about premature puppies where we had a problem. How many days was the mama delivery? Well, that was a mistake that we made, and the problem was it was a small litter. Uh, we had bred her early, and because of that, we were going very long. And so she was apparently about five days past due date. And that's why we pushed this, that's why we didn't have a progesterone machine. And we got in trouble, we lost a puppy over that. So um, this is all part of this, be very careful about C-section dates because you can absolutely get it wrong, especially, especially in small litters, because you probably had a small litter because you got the timing wrong. Because of that, remember that the timing of C-section has got nothing to do with when you AI, it's all to do basically with when the dog ovulated. And so if you breed late, then what happens is, is that you think you've got another four or five days to go, excuse me, you think you're already in the right place, but you're not. So we'd be very careful about that. It's very important that if you're breeding dogs, that you get a progesterone machine. I would. Uh, if your vet has it, it's going to cost you Buku's money that you could pay for your progesterone machine. So it's excellent to have on with the timing of breeding, and it's excellent to have with the timing of your female on having babies. Got that right. And you lose a single puppy like we did. You pay for a pay for machine. Machine. And all the time that you waste going to and from the vet, and all the times that you worry whether or not somebody's done the test right or giving you the well, right you're results. you're walking into the vet's office where six dogs go, and your dog's coming home to Absolutely. Them too. You're absolutely right. And, and by the way, we've got specials going on this month uh, with a discount. It's actually the thing it doesn't cover on the discounts, the July discount, it doesn't cover progesterone machines or, or progesterone tests, but everything else is is uh, got a discount on it. And I forget the code. Uh, I think it's 10 or 50 percent. So let me see if I can find it's out. Uh, let's see if I can find out what's going on with the discount code. Well, I don't have it written down. Yeah, anyway, I do too. 50 percent off 50, on everything. 15. 50, 15. Use the code capital USA15. USA15. 50 percent off. It's a good deal. Take advantage of it. You need some supply. supply yeah, I and mean, if you don't have an incubator, don't have a whelping kit, now it's time to go get it, get 50% off, save yourself some money. All right. And going on to the next one. Okay, someone's asking about swimmer and flat chest. Uh, Unclemmer Earl, or Uncle Uncle Merle. What'd you say? Unclemmer Earl, <laughs> Uncle Merle, Uncle Merle. How old is the pu his puppy? Uh, well, someone wants to know how old you can do the flat chest and the swimmers things and it's two weeks old in three days it's not too late and it's never too late but the sooner you get it the sooner you'll have some good results how do you know so this is laurel um, omero laurel romero sorry how do you know if you should do a c-section or take a chance at vaginal um i can skip testing and just mate every day Oh yeah. Well, it's just two separate things. So, so the answer is is you don't know whether a a, um, a natural whelp will be okay until you try it and have problems. The recipe for disaster is if you have not done an X-ray to know how big and how many puppies are coming, you're making a huge mistake. I think you're making a huge mistake not electing to do a C-section anyway. 
but the ones that are the best chance to be successful are actually larger litters where you've bred a small stud dog to a bigger female. But our recommendation is don't play that game, we never do. Um, can I just skip testing and just mate every day? No, because the problem with this is, is that you dilute the male. And so you keep on using the male, and the time that you actually did it the right day, his semen count's gone down to nothing because you just pulled him four days in a row. So that's not a good way of doing it either. Eddie Adams. Oh, look, this is Eddie Adams. Rob and I are so excited to meet Dynamite the, and introduce him to our crew. Such a handsome little guy. Thank it's you. It's the Adams family, Eddie Munster. <laughs> so they're getting Dynamite? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah Dynamite's yeah. our little solid new shade girl. Oh, or pretty. no, new shade boy. Solid new pretty shade little, boy. Pretty yeah. small little boy. Oh, he's, yeah. He's, yeah. He's a little character yeah. too, isn't he? Yeah. I like him. And they bought. Um, Crypto, which used to be, it was out of kids' litter. Yes. And, um, uh, Draco or? Yeah, Draco is yeah. what we, no, no, it wasn't kids' litter. It was that fluffy litter. He's a fluffy Draco. boy. We called him Draco, yes. and then they named him Crypto, and he's done, he's been very good, very successful at what he's doing. And so, and of course, the Adams family, too. Uh, big shout out to them, our, our uh, repeat customers. Yes, so thank you. Alright, so uh, user KX4 says, can you add oxygen to the port of Winkyman? Absolutely. Two ways you can do it. You can drill a hole with a, actually take a pair of scissors, I've got a video that shows you how to do it. Make a little hole in the side and pass the tube inside. Or you can just crank the lid open slightly and put the tube through. Either of those work fine. Yeah. Hi James, uh, Tanker Dizzy's mum. We think our Merle girl Izzy is pregnant, going for an ultrasound. Day 33, she's eating a lot of grass. Sometimes it makes her vomit, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, grass is supposed to kind of settle their tummy too, so that's why she's eating grass. She's got upset tummy. Um, so you ask whether it's safe for her to eat grass or whether it will affect her puppies? Yeah. So I mean, I think the concern is of eating grass is that dogs can vomit. If they continue to vomit, they can lose electrolytes. And so, but yeah. I don't think it's a huge concern. Yeah. But uh, I mean, generally, I mean, well, they didn't eat it. Is it pretty safe to give? Um, Probiotics during yes, pregnancy. Okay. Yes, good yeah, probiotics is good to have. Sometimes they just got something nasty in their gut. Probiotics is great to give them. Someone okay. says here also you can give mummy yogurt. I think that works very well. Oh, yeah, yogurt's yeah. good too. Because that's a probiotic. Yeah. That's pumpkin. Uh, nah, no, pumpkin spice diarrhea. Yeah. Uh, Mama Bear Chihuahuas. Thanks again, love your advice. When doing an AI, once you have the sample in the collection bag, do you retrieve it with the syringes and attach the pipette? Or retrieve it with the pipette? I put the pipette on the syringe. The reason for that is, is that you can really get down in the corner of the bag and get everything. And you don't go get your hands that have been on the syringe potentially in contact with the semen. So you've got a sterilization issue. Uh, when I may sterilize, I mean, you, you may, not your hands on a sterile field. So I think you're much better off to put the pipette onto the syringe. Make sure the pipette is on solidly because you can blow that syringe, that pipette off uh, and lose everything. So make sure it's on properly and stick it in there so up. My dog bled for, this is Beats by Jerk. My dog bled for 23 days. Blood getting darker towards the end and not light. I don't know why, she's pregnant and healthy. Is having a surgical, she can't get a surgical on the 14th. Eighth day PG was four point seven. Okay. Well, so first off, an eighth day PG is four point seven. We'll call that ovulation. That dog should be ready to bread two days later, which would be the tenth, and a day later than that for a surgical, which is the eleventh. They did on the 14th. So you know that's fine. Obviously, if the dog's pregnant, you did it okay. Um, the part about the blood colour, don't get worried about it. I mean, some dogs bleed like crazy for the entire time. Some dogs hardly should bleed at all. Some dogs, most dogs lighten up around ovulation and are almost vanilla colour when it's time to breed. Yeah, it's and fun. just like uh, Phoebe that we just bred, yes. she uh, is still doing a little bit of bleeding, and I mean, it was forever and a day for her to, we were a month numbers into to come it. up. Huh? We were a month into this, aren't we? Oh, almost. It's, yep. you know, not quite, but almost. So she bled for a long time, so just it happens sometimes. Yeah. Kevin Stamps, I just bred a female. 
to a new shade, a stud, no pine, no brindle, carries a copy of cream. Her DNA is a copy of testable, a copy of blue, a copy of cocoa, a copy of cream, ATAT. No pine, no brindle. She's a moral. What kill us will I end up with? One of the odds of getting a new shade, Isabella. Not good. And here's the reason why. You've got to get your dog to throw the blue, the coke, the blue, the testable together for you to get a new shade. And so that is a half and a quarter. So one in quarter you'd expect to be new shade Isabella's. And then if they throw the cocoa as well, that becomes a new shade. So then it's one in eight. So, so the, you can get it, but the, it depends on the size of the litter, of course. More the dogs, a better chance to have it, but not very good. But it's quite possible. Vaccinated puppy, can I do it at six, eight, ten weeks? Um, not what's recommended. Uh, so the, the problem with vaccinations is, is that you've got, you can't vaccinate too early because mum has given uh, antibodies to the puppies and they will affect the vaccine, so they've got to wear off. And when you give the next shot after the first one, the, 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 this previous shot has got to wore off a little bit so the next vaccination gets a full reaction. So I don't know why you want to do it at 6, 8, 10, but for us it's 6, 9, 12. Um, but uh, you know, you're much better off vaccinated than not vaccinating, but I think the right way to do it is three weeks apart, but other people would disagree with me, so you know you, you might want to Google that and see what you can come up with. That's it for this one. Bye. Me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet, I'm not a licensed medical professional, I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here, and certainly this should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye. Come on, man.